Well, both of my parents were teachers. Looking back on my childhood, I started to realize how lucky I was to have summers off and to have parents who read all the time and believed in traveling and ideas and conversations. Um, and then the second thing that really inspired me to be a teacher happened in college. It was in college where I really realized that the great question is not what kind of a human being we are, but what can we become? And realizing that learning and teachers had a part to play in all of us becoming the best version of ourselves, I realized I wanted to be a part of that dynamic process for all of my students. There are so many, it would be difficult to pinpoint all of them, of course. Uh, you know, I always call the Flockmans my, my mom and dad of CSUB. Uh, and of course, my, my colleagues in the political science department, Mark Martinez, has been wonderful to me. Gene Clark has been wonderful to me. Um, but, but I would say that, that Michael Flockman in particular, uh, when I was 24 years old, his daughter was in my class, and she said, you know what, you should go play tennis with my dad. And I went and I played tennis with him, and it was, it was first of all, he was much older and still almost beat me. Uh, but I remember afterwards retiring to the Stockdale Country Club you know, room, and you would, you would eat lunch, and of course he ordered a drink called a Flockman after himself, which I thought was the most amazing thing in the history of the world. But to talk to him about what it means to truly be an educator who is extraordinary in the classroom, but also writes, uh, and also wants to be you know, a scholar in what your, what, what your subject is. He's the one who inspired me to do that, kind of showed me what that looks like. And he also showed me, by the way, that in education, you can't be a phony, uh, that students see right through that. Part of being a good teacher is being a good man, is being a good woman, is being a good human being. He taught that to me, and I will always be in his debt for that. He is an amazing public speaker because he always knows his audience and he brings passion to it like he does to everything in his life. He speaks on a variety of topics and always gives creative, effective talks. When I go to an event, I cannot wait to hear him speak and I never look at my watch once. He gets it. Uh, he has a relationship with kids that is uh, second to none. Um, his relationship with his peers is second to none. But I think it's just, uh, he's uh, uh, magnetic. Uh, kids just wanna hang on to every word as he lectures or talks about a, a certain historical topic. Students are naturally excited about things. You get them talking about sports and there's so much verve and excitement. You get them talking about pop culture and they know every little thing. You get them to start talking about curriculum or literature or the branches of government. Sometimes they lose that verve and that zest. And I thought to myself one day, wouldn't it be great if we could transfer all of this youthful enthusiasm they have for these other things and actually transfer it to something that truly matters, which is a love and understanding of the United States of America. I think the Earl Warren Cup is the most anticipated event we do. It's drawn a lot of attention to the school and, and to our students, which is fabulous. Uh, the second or third last Earl Warren Cup that we had, uh, Mr. Reese flew in from the top of the ceiling and, and, and we all caught the Earl Warren Cup tro trophy with him. Uh, and then there was uh, the year where we had uh, a member of the Supreme Court reading the preamble. We had the Speaker of the House asking a question. Uh, we had a Prime Minister, Tony Blair, asking about Winston Churchill. And also one of the kind of more surreal moments for me was sitting at my computer in my classroom here and writing out two questions and then a few days later watching George W. Bush read those questions verbatim uh, was thrilling, absolutely thrilling. Teaching is actually a very lonely profession sometimes. I know you, you, you work in a, a huge community with hundreds of other teachers and you're in a classroom all day with other people, but you're a teacher most of the time by yourself. And so I like writing a lot about the issues that we encounter so that other teachers throughout the country can kind of know that they're not alone. Uh, and I also, you know, a lot of people think that this is naive, but there is magic in the classroom. You don't have to go to Disneyland or to Hollywood to see magic. He's helped me to be a better teacher uh, and Young teachers especially coming onto the staff know of him or, or he quickly makes a, a relationship with them and he helps them to, to get their feet wet and to understand that the energy in the classroom is very important. So uh, I think a lot of our young teachers see him as a, as a role model. As a teacher, Jeremy is inspirational. As a colleague, he is stimulating and creative. And as a writer, in my opinion, he is unsurpassed. Being a teacher is not a profession to me. It's a part of who I am. I have no ambition 
beyond the classroom. I, of course, I want to continue to write, and of course, who doesn't want to sell more books or you know, be asked to speak to, to more audiences? Uh, but as far as what do I see myself as, th that is who I am. You can take me out of the classroom, but you can't take the classroom out of me. Uh, he's a very proud dad, a very good husband. Um, and one thing that people don't know about Jeremy Adams is that uh, he loves rap. Dr. Dre, Snoop Dogg, you would be amazed. You know, we talk about a lot of influences, Cal State professors, my extraordinary parents, my wife, who's extraordinary, uh, and a CSUB alumnus. But there's no question that there are two Mr. Adamses, and the one that happened after I had my children is the far better teacher. Once you experience that kind of love, and then you realize you make the connection to your profession, which is that I'm standing in front of a classroom filled with kids who are loved by somebody as much as I love my own children, and I think to myself, what kind of a teacher do I want my children to have? And then you make that aha moment of, well, that's the kind of teacher you need to be for all of those kids in your classroom. Without Lauren, Emma, and Benjamin, I wouldn't be here tonight. This community is filled with hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of extraordinary teachers, and to kind of be plucked out is it's truly the honor of a lifetime. Congratulations, Jeremy. I've known you from the womb to the room. I'm very proud of you. Congratulations, Jeremy. We're very proud of you. Congratulations, Congratulations Jeremy. Jeremy. Woo! Congratulations, Jeremy. You rock. Way to go. Congratulations, Jeremy. You've always been a Hall of Famer. In our hearts. Congratulations. We love you, Mr. Adams. Welcome to the club, Jeremy. You deserve it.